What's going on, everyone? So one of the things that I've talked about heavily uh, for a couple weeks now is the starting unit, right? With Rui, D'Lo, Reeves, LeBron, Anthony Davis. And I've talked about how I had my concerns uh, with this team uh, and how would they compare against the more uh, elite scoring options, right? Particularly Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura, right? D'Lo has been spectacular this season. LeBron James and Anthony Davis, those are your clear-cut three best players. Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura, I think one of them need to go out of the starting unit. Uh, I know that before the Suns game, they were 6-0, and but I did a full video breakdown of the teams that they played. The only team that they played that actually was like a playoff team was the New Orleans Pelicans, right? The first real matchup that they played against a team that many believe will could potentially win an NBA championship they got smoked to start the game, right? And it's because this starting five, they essentially have to play perfect offensively, right? They have a 120 offensive rating, 114 defensive rating. Yes, that's six point margin. But if they start off slow offensively, they don't have the defense to offset and balance it. And most of their offensive threat, especially to start games, are D'Lo, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James. And the issue is Austin Reeves is constantly getting targeted all season long. And Rui Hachimura struggles fighting through screens, moving laterally against the quicker, twitchier defensive guys, right? The teams that the Lakers ended up beating were teams like the Spurs, the Pistons, the Portland Trail Blazers. They did beat the Knicks, but the Knicks were missing Julius Randle, OG Ananubi, several pieces that were and could have made a real difference in that game, in that matchup, right? Again, I love Rui. I love Austin Reeves. I just don't think once you get to the postseason, you're going to be able to run this starting five effectively enough when there's too many holes that teams are going to be able to target. Because once you get to the postseason, now you're playing nothing but good teams. Now you're playing nothing but teams that have elite offensive scoring talent, right? And so, for example, you saw... In the Suns game, right? Rui matched up against Kevin Durant. Austin Reeves matched up against uh, Devin Booker. And those two torched us, right? We kept uh, trying to close out on them double teams, trying to trap them. And they just kept playing out of it, which, again, then we had to rotate and get back. And other guys just killed us. And they had almost all five starters having 20 points because Devin Booker and Kevin Durant we're just waiting for the trap because they knew if you leave Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura one-on-one -on, -one on an island, we're going to torch them. And so the Lakers were like, hey, we don't want these two to go off for 70 combined. So let's try to make other guys hit some shots. And you saw Grayson Allen, you saw uh, Royce O'Neal, and, and Nurk was just dominant. And that, I think, is going to be a problem if we get to the postseason. I don't believe that you can keep both of these guys in the starting unit as much as, you know, I like both of these guys, but I think you need the best balance to start and kind of put yourself in the best position to have these better starts to games and then carry that into, hey, let's let's mix and match with this. Let's get Reeves in there. Let's get Rui in there. Let's get whomever in there, Dinwiddie, things like that, and really start carving out roles. Now, you could stick with this team for a while or this starting five, but I think as guys start trickling in, I do think you need to find out what is your best five man lineup. What are your best five man units uh, that you're going to go with for the starting five come the postseason? The last thing you want to do, stick with this starting five. And now you get to the postseason and it's not working and you're getting exploited. And now you're throwing out a new starting five and they have to try to figure it out on the fly rather than they already have that built in chemistry. And I get that the Lakers have, had a ton of different lineups, ton of different starting fives. A lot of it has been due to injuries. Some of it has just been Darvin Ham. But I do think one of these guys need to be taken out of the lineup. Now, you could argue Rui, right? Like, our best lineup this season, although it hasn't been played a ton, which is really surprising, uh, is the lineup that took us to the, the uh, Western Conference Finals last season, which was... D'Lo, Reeves, Vandal, LeBron, and AD. So 
inherently it's like, okay, well, let's go with that. But one, we don't know if Jared Vanderbilt's ever going to return. Hopefully he does. If he does, maybe you could go with that come the postseason or to, to close out this season. But it also depends on when does Jared Vanderbilt come back, right? What if he comes back with like three games left in the season or he comes back right at the postseason? Do you really want to like inject him into the starting unit when he's trying to get his legs under him? Maybe as you advance, maybe you can. But I just, I have some questions about that. Like, we'll see. It's one of those things where we'll wait and see as time comes. Um, I don't, my thing is, I don't hate Rui. Rui is a better four. He is a four. He's not really a three. But he is shooting 40% from three this season. He does add some offensive versatility. Uh, he is a guy that you could just dump the ball down to, and he could just go to work and use his size and, and his strengths to just go get buckets, right? So I don't hate the idea of like keeping Rui in the starting lineup. And for now, I kind of would. I want to kind of see what does it look like if you had a defensive guy at the two guard and you now move Austin Reeves to the bench. Now, I know a lot of people are going to look at it and go, Reeves to the bench, blah, blah, blah. Again, Austin Reeves on the bench is better than Austin Reeves in the starting lineup. I mean, the numbers this season back it up. Okay, so here, let's break it down real quick for those that, you know, think that Reeves has to be in the starting unit, right? One of the big issues with Reeves and D'Lo as your backcourt is lack of athleticism, uh, lack of defense, and one of them usually ends up kind of being the odd man out at times. There are times where like Reeves and D'Lo both thrive, but you see a lot of times where Reeves, like D'Lo's cooking early, 80s cooking early, LeBron's doing his thing, and Reeves is just kind of getting a couple shots up, right? But you look at a game, a great example is like the Boston game. Reeves played fantastic in that game, but he was able to get the shots and the reps up. He can't really do that in the starting unit. One of the reasons he is better in the bench unit over the starting unit is because he gets to kind of just be Reeves in the bench unit. He is needed as that scoring threat. So he gets to kind of have the ball and just go rather than him just kind of being spot up at times and got to kind of pick and choose his spots. And then at times he gets tunnel vision because he's like, okay, I need to go get mine. I haven't shot in a while. And then you, you run into this like he just is missing Anthony Davis wide open, things like that. But if you look at Austin Reeves this season, for the season, he's played 59 games. He started 34 games. So literally a third of the games this season, he has actually came off the bench, which means we have a good sample size for both, right? So as a, as the season, for the whole season, he's averaging 15.7 points, 5.4 assists, 3.9 rebounds. Uh, we'll, we'll round it up because it's 0.9. So one steal, I'll round it up half a block, shooting 86.5% from the foul line. He's shooting 58.1% uh, from two-point range, 56.6% EFG. Uh, Three-point per, three percentage, 36.4 on 4.8 attempts. Now, if you move to the bench unit, Austin Reeves is averaging 15.4 points, 5.3 assists, and 4.4 rebounds in the... In the uh, 25 games or whatever it is that he's off the bench and the 20, it is 25 games that he's been off the bench. That is again, excellent. And he has a true shooting percentage off the bench of 61.8 an effective field goal percentage of 56.7. His three point rate is 42.6. And he's just better in every statistical category. So, He's giving you the exact same production, right? So 15.4 points uh, compared to 15.7. He's generating 5.3 assists. So you still are getting the playmaking Austin Reeves, right? You're still not losing that. That I don't really think he's a playmaker, but he's averaging 5.4 assists compared to 5.3. So it's the same assists. This He's basically averaging the same exact uh, stat line. He's actually averaging more rebounds, but he's doing it on far better efficiency. Why? Because one, 
he's not going up against the you know stronger defensive players. Two, as I mentioned earlier, he gets to be Austin Reeves. He doesn't have to, you know, kind of conform with the other guys of like a Rui and a Dilo. He's now, instead of being the fourth or fifth scoring option, he gets to be the primary one. And you put him into the into the bench roll, kind of leave Rui for right now, and then I would move somebody else into the two spot and kind of just let Reeves just go ham, let him go to town, right? So the question is, who do you replace Austin Reeves with? Well, you could go with Max Christie. And Max Christie does make a lot of sense because his versatility on the defensive side, he's been able to knock down the three ball, although it's primarily the corner three. He's actually like super elite. Uh, in the corner three-point shot, but pretty much everywhere else he struggles at times. Um, my problem with Max Christie, and again, I love Max Christie. I'm probably the highest on Max Christie out of anybody on this roster. I think Max Christie, at worst, will be like a premier 3 and D guy in this league. At best, he might be like a smaller Paul George. Like, he has just, he's shown the flashes and skills for only a second guy, second year guy. He's also 20 years old. That's where my concerns lie. Him being a 20-year-old player in his second year, you see that at times. You see him struggle to fight over screens. You see him gamble. You see him kind of be out of position because he, as great as he is on the defense side, it's all just just raw talent, right? It's all just kind of like he, he has to kind of go through the motions and develop that over you know a, a handful of years to where all of a sudden – Okay, I understand. I need to be here. Okay. And he can start reading things before they develop to know how to get through him. Right? Like Jared Vanderbilt is a great example. Jared Vanderbilt, but he also has the the physical tools uh, more so than, than Max Christie. But you look at a guy like Max Christie, he's he hasn't he he's going off of just raw talent and instinct. Where he needs as soon as he starts learning the intricacies of the defensive side of the ball that's when I think he'll take that next step. And that's when I think there's a real argument to have him start as the two. Again, you could do it during the regular season. I just worry about the postseason. You having him be a target and teams really putting him just kind of through through the, the vacuum. Um, problem is there's not a lot of options at the two guard for the Lakers. And that's the problem. It's like, okay, if you move Austin Reeves to the bench, who do you replace him with? Because again, it's about balance. Right, as Austin Reeves is probably our fourth best player, but it's not just so much about putting your five best guys on the basketball court, right? It's about putting the five best pieces on the court that are going to give you and yield the best results and have the best balance, right? So it's not that I'm like, oh, Austin Reeves is you know your seventh best player or anything like that. No, I think Austin Reeves still has a lot of great in him. He's had his struggles this season, but he's had a lot of good moments. I just think he gets to now play the role that he is best at, which is the two guard and be aggressive and be in attack mode, right? Like last season, you look at Austin Reeves. Where was he best at? In attack mode, being aggressive, uh, having the ball in his hands, right? Like he can do that off the bench. He can't do that as much in the starting unit. And for Austin Reeves, it's about the minutes he plays. It's not so much about the the starting or bench. So to me, I just, I, I think... You, you could go with the Max Christie. Another option would be like a Spencer Dinwiddie. Although, like, what is Dinwiddie's role right now? It's driving me insane. Because it's like, you got this guy who's a versatile combo guard that can make plays, hit shots, create for himself, create for others, and yet you just have him relegated to being a spot-up corner three-point shooter. That drives me crazy. And my concern is that if you move him to the starting unit, that's all he'll be. I'd like his athleticism. I'd like his defense. I'd like him just to help in that regard. I also think he'd help with the rebounding. One of the big issues with the rebounding, I did a whole video this morning about that. Go check that video out after this one. But one of the big things and the big issues with the rebounding is we just don't have the foot speed and quickness to go get those long rebounds, right? Like you saw it in the Suns game. It's a perfect example, right? Like they were just tracking down those balls and getting them. I mean, even LeBron said as much. You know, us as guards and and uh, forwards, we got to do a better job of tracking those balls down. And it's because we just we, the the issues is we just don't have the foot speed. Rui isn't super quick to get into point A to B. 
you know, Reeves and D'Lo aren't that. Like, Spencer would help in that regard, but I just, I don't think his role in the starting unit would be what we need it to be from him. And so for that reason, I don't think that he should be in the starting unit. Plus, I really like the idea of Spencer Dinwiddie and Austin Reeves as your backcourt off the bench. I think if you actually let Spencer Dinwiddie play the point guard off the bench, and then you let Reeves be the two guard, you might have, if not the best, backcourt duo off the bench in the league. Like, Because you're talking about two guys that are starting level players coming off the bench and can both go drop 15 plus. And, but you got to let them play their role. Let Spencer Dinwiddie be on the ball. Let Austin Reeves be your scorer, right? I think you'd have a lot of success. And then those two can kind of develop that chemistry and build that into the postseason. That, I kind of like that idea. So what would be another option? Dorian Prince, believe it or not, Dorian Prince uh, is like the five-man unit of like Prince, uh, Rui, D'Lo, LeBron, and AD actually is one of the better starting fives. I just don't want <laughs> Darvin Ham already plays Tory and Prince far too much and has Tory and Prince playing far too big of a role. I don't like the idea of Tory and Prince, so I'm going to leave him out of there. I think you go with Cam Reddish. Um, again, I would I would love Jared Vanderbilt. I just I, one we just don't know when Jared Vanderbilt's going to return, and two Cam Reddish is a slightly better offensive player. But the Lakers did an excellent job of getting Jared Vanderbilt to be uh, a, a a viable offensive threat out there on the court, right? They they had him constantly in action. He was constantly being the slasher, the cutter. Right? He wasn't just relegated to standing in the corner. He was moving a lot off ball. I think he could do a lot of the same things with Cam Reddish, but also Cam Reddish is a, is a slightly better three-point shooter. Not by much, but slightly better. But also Cam Reddish gives you that size that versatility, that point of attack. He can play the two guard, right? And now you keep your size. Your small, your smallest guy on the court would be D'Lo, who's 6'3", 6'4". Everyone else is 6'8", or bigger. And you now have that guy that does have the foot speed, that does have the athleticism, that can put pressure on the opposing team. Uh, I just think that that would be a better look. To me, I think you kind of just like, Give that a look. See how that works, especially with Rui. Like I said, he's shooting 40% from three-point range. If he can maintain that, I think you'd have enough. Between D'Lo, Rui, LeBron, and AD, I believe you have enough offensive firepower to offset Cam Reddish. And then if you can make Cam Reddish play the role that Jared Vanderbilt played, where he's constantly moving off ball and constantly being that cutter and that threat, with his size, his speed, and his athleticism, I just think you'd be in such a... Advantage states constantly. And I just think that that would be the best course of action right now. Give that a look. See what that looks like. If Rui is still kind of the weak, weak link and they're targeting him and stuff, then maybe you make that adjustment or maybe you put Reeves back on the starting unit. And and if Jer Jared Vanderbilt comes back, you kind of go back to the starting five that you knew worked. There's always options. But I do like the idea of the size of that unit. Right, you're talking about, like I said, four guys that are 6'8 or bigger. And then you have athleticism, you have versatility, you have a little bit of everything. I really like that. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think that uh, Reeves should go to the bench? Do you think, no, he should start? Um, again, it's, it's nothing to do with Reeves in particular. It's just, again, it's more so the fit, uh, the, the role... All of these factors, the efficiency off the bench compared to starting, there's several reasons that are just, in my opinion, much more, like all signs point to like, this is the best option. And, you know, I just think that would give us the best result. But anyway, again, love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.